Arsenal Fan TV. Plug, you say you've got some news for me on the manager. I do, but first I should like to just make a quick uh, no, dedication no, no, to Arsenal. No, no, I don't want no dedication. I've got to say something. Right? No, wait. No, no, no. I've had enough dedications today. I want to get straight to the big news, breaking news that you say you've got for me. You've got the Aubameyang transfer, right? So I trust that whatever news you're going to give me now, that I can, this is fair, you can never say 100%, but it's fairly reliable. What have you heard? I will say, but I've got to say about Arsenal, although I have to, because today no, is a I memorable don't want day. To hear, no, I, I have don't, to say, I have to say. I don't want to hear about, this we've heard, why. we've this had a why. lot. Wait, you can tell me about that afterwards. Who's the link? We are very, very close to sorting out an agreement for Massimiliano Allegri. He, Allegri, he, we, 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 he spoke to us a few months ago and said that he needed to know sooner rather than later um, what the plan was so he could informally allow um, Juventus notice they can start searching for a new manager. And then talks were going to commence at the end of the season once, um, once their title challenge was finished and once we'd finished our, camp our season here. And this is the thing with, the, this with Allegri. <coughs> we agreed a deal for him last summer where it w didn't, when he knew we weren't in the Champions League, he knew limitations <coughs> in terms of um, potential budgets of players we've got and that was an obstacle and that won't be one now. And it is looking increasingly likely that he will be our manager. There are due to be formal talks within the next week or so, of which his representatives will be flying over to London. And How do you they, know all this? And there is all, and and they're also looking for. They also are. They are now also house hunting for him with his family, with his children. For his children. What about this guy from Liverpool, number two? It very much seems as though that they've taken an information which, unfortunately, I think his dad's ill in in, in, his, in his country, and he's gone to look after a family member or something. And they've literally the, the press have put two and two together because of his link with Sven and Dortmund. And in my in my opinion, I think that's also disgraceful to do to, to put that sort of thought because if you're if you are if you're if you're an assistant manager and you're a team where you'll get you're due to go and win a Champions League or to, to, to be in a final, mm. you don't go and leave just before that. You stay like it's just it's just logic. Like you're not going to walk away just before something of that stature. All right, and now send your tribute. Now I've got that information. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing, Arsene Wenger is a man who I think has been really heavily criticised here and w despite people may have their agendas, there are methods of which that people have displayed which have been incorrect and I like to just give my dedication to Arsene, it's just that I'm 18 years of age, I've never known anything different to Arsene but I'm lucky enough to remember going to the Invincible season because that, that was my first games and my first memories were that season but to Arsene I think his biggest achievement wasn't that and it wasn't the titles and it wasn't the trophies his biggest achievement, in my opinion, was the consecutive season of the Champions League. Because when we left Highbury, and I know everyone says that, that we were promised to be with Bayern Munich and whatnot, we were very we unlucky. Were. We were very unlucky, though. And this is one thing people don't understand. At that time, when we were in 2004, 2005, and it was all so forth, when we were provided such information, football und underwent one of the biggest transformations, which no one could have expected. And that was the change in how club revenue was, was changed. So in the days where ticket, rev where ticket sales was the, was the biggest income a club would have, mm. that dramatically dropped in co correlation to stuff like the, um, the foreign investors and the TV deals and commercial deals and whatnot. Oh, and it's so, under it's so underrated. It's such an easy argument people um, put against Gazidas and against Arsene. But you get a significant amount of money for qualifying for the Champions League. And with a limited budget where we literally, there was times where we literally could, had to find the nearest £10 to something because that's how tight we had to be because of how close we were to the brink. To be able to get and sustain the money we, we got from Champions League football qualification with the squads we had, I think that was remarkable. You and it's what Arsene says, the also... point of tenacity. He always talks about tenacity and that his, his self-determined mind. And that's the biggest... That's the most respectable thing about Arsenal because no Were matter they slow to react. Well, they can can they also be criticised, Arsenal Wenger and the board, for being slow to react to the changing face, the changing landscape. When you're a business person, they say that you know, you've got to be able to react to the changing landscape. So, it's you know, you you, you bring out you know you bring out an iPhone and you know or you bring out a phone, but then you hear that they're across the road they're working on a phone with where you know can make your tea. And coffee, you got you got you got you got to start thinking as well about well how can we incorporate that? It's, you don't just not. react once it's done. It's not. It's Did they react to Chelsea, to these sort of things too late? And they're yeah. not exactly you know down to their last ten pound. I mean, they were then, Stan Kroenke, you know, no, he, he's a billionaire. Yeah, but to be fair. And, and they got the, Usmanov here on, you know, who's yeah, a board this, member. This was up to 2013 as well, you have to remember that. They got Our Usmanov's a board member. Yeah, but remember the Billionaire, they, down the last 10 quid. So firstly... I would have lent him a tenner for that. So firstly, Usmanov doesn't have any financials. He's actually been, he's struck off the board, he's not part of the board. He does have no, his no, shares. That's, that's because this, they don't want him to. But this is the thing. So, no, so, so no, to me, that's not an excuse. Not, and I'll tell you what, this is, this is the thing. Up until 2013, that's when we had our biggest financial issues. When we're playing players like Danielson, Marouane Shamak, Andre Santos, and that's the time I'm talking about. We're playing better than now. 
But the difference is, that's why I credit Arsenal particularly, because the financial hole we've been left in because of the money it costs to build the Emirates and the way that genuinely... So what happened now then? All right, that's all, you know, because, you know, time's winding. So why why is gone. it that he... Why is it... This is down to Strangle. Why is he able to get a team into the top four with the money from Chelsea and City there, right? With Denilson in it and Shamak. And now he's got Aubameyang, Lacazette, and he can't win a game away from home. The difference is Stan Kroenke. In the summer, we had a budget of £150 million. And when we told Kroenke that Ozil and Sanchez were going to be staying in their contracts, which was the case at the time, Kroenke pulled away £100 million, hence why we didn't sign anyone post Lacazette. Okay. Now, after the, after the Leicester game and after the Liverpool game, Wenger was constantly begging Stan for money. He said, look, Stan, we need money. Our defence is not strong enough. We need another midfielder, but a, a solid one. I need money. Or at least a wide, a wide pair, where we, then we can drop some when of our was that in the back. summer? It's in the summer. Kroenke mm. turned around within four days of the window, finishing, five days, and said to Wenger, you can spend what you sell. That's why we lost so many players, and that's why we put such a big offer in for Lamar, because Wenger knew we had to spend the money. And but, it was however... Of the, Stan Kroenke will not invest his money into the club. He's more interested in sending his money, like he did with 100 million, to the LA Rams Stadium in Hollywood Park and sustaining his other teams because he uses Arsenal as his cash cow, where he generates money here and says this with other clubs in America, which are his focus. And... I'm sorry, but as an owner, I don't find that. I think I, I think it's not only is it disrespectful, but I think equally, I think everyone's going to be very surprised to see it when Arsene releases his autobiography, which I okay. hope he does, exposing the board. Because okay, so, be well, so finally, once again, it. Allegri for you is the one coming in. As it stands, yes, Allegri is going to be our manager next season. And our players, also, can I just say, we've got a lot of exciting signings coming. And all I can say is now, I'm you better get this right. You're gonna get, I'm you're, get you're, you're gonna get filled in by some people around here. Trust me. Names, if you don't get these things right enough, I'm not saying names. Don't now. build up people, you know, right? We will be signing. We won't just be signing nobodies. We'll be signing a, 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 a world-class known players. Right. And, I, and, and I'm not sure how, but I will. Tr I will find ways to update everyone in the season summer because I'm telling you this now, and I'm saying this, Matt. I'm saying this to you, Robbie. I'm saying this to everyone here. This summer is going to be one of the biggest summers in Arsenal's history. Some of the players I'm, I'm been told uh, we're, we're, we're speaking to, and we've had meetings with, are players which will make Arsenal fans' jaws drop. Okay. It's Robbie here. I'm on the set of the Real Football Fan Show. We're about to get things cracking. You ready for this? Oh yeah. The Real Football Fan Show every Thursday just after midnight on Channel 4. Make sure you check it out.